Welcome to Five Stripe Weekly. We say welcome to a new Five Stripe and goodbye to an old one. We cover that, all of the week's news, and more coming up. Welcome to the show, Five Stripe fam. I'm AJ and this is Mark. Before we get into it, become a member of the Notification Squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button on YouTube or hop over from Facebook and subscribe. This video is sponsored by Burr Burr Sushi. Burr Burr Sushi is a Japanese inspired fast casual eatery that offers ramen, sushi burritos, and poke bowls. Burr Burr delivers cuisine that's ethical, delicious, and fast. Guests can create their own rice bowls and sushi burritos through an array of fresh vegetables, marinated meats, and quality sauces. Also now serving a collection of traditional Japanese ramen. Atlanta United played two preseason matches this past week, but first, before we get into that, let's say goodbye to Tito Vishalba. Unfortunately, and another original five stripe mm -hmm. is gone from the team. Uh, a lot of uh, people they had him as their fan favorite for, for sure. sure, and that's uh, my roommate's one of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I'm sure the the ladies are all going to be missing uh, Tito Fischalba, <laughs> but you know, it is a, a sad day. I mean, mm -hmm. he's a guy that brought so many just memorable moments for the Atlanta United fans. For sure. I mean, just. For sure. Going to, uh, I mean, I, I'm not even going to go through all of it. There's a lot. There's, There's yeah, <laughs> so many, so many, right? But um, but it's just you know one of those guys that uh, because of the passion that he showed on yeah. the pitch, uh, he showed up in those big moments uh, and scored some very big goals for us, yeah. especially against that team from Florida. Woo. It was uh, yeah, it, it is sad to see him go, uh, but it is uh, the the fact is is mm -hmm. that he in 2018 and 2019 played a lot less than uh, he did in uh, the inaugural season and. The, you know the numbers definitely precipitous, precipitously dropped. Yeah, uh, you went from double digits goals and assists yeah. to pretty much uh, you were you know paying about eight hundred thousand uh, for not a ton of production, which yeah. is unfortunate because we know the type of talent that he has. Exactly. Um, you know the injuries played a part, and then for not sure. being favored in. Uh, you know, kind of the selection also also played a part. Yeah, so. and I mean, and that did start under Tata, to be fair, right? With the, you know, towards the end of 2018, 2018 season. Sub. Yeah, exactly. Became a super sub, was very good at it, but at the, you know, at the same time, for a player of his talent and his salary, you know, is that really his proper role? Probably not. Um, and so, yeah, I think it makes sense for him to pursue starting minutes elsewhere. And, yeah. uh, you know, as he, you guys alluded to, not in MLS. Yeah, not in MLS. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, you know, sought minutes from, uh, you know, Frank DeBoer and Carlos Bocanegra. And essentially, yeah, he was not promised that he would be able to uh, get minutes from DeBoer. Yeah. So, Which is know. a smart, like, I don't think you can necessarily promise minutes because you just don't know how that season's going to play out. A lot of times yeah. I think teams do that and get themselves in trouble and then a the player's more upset. Sure. You know, it's, uh, I think there's, that's one thing that I mean, United has done kind of skillfully is, uh, you know, avoid situations that, you know, could play out to be worse. Like, you know, Gressel... You know, he mentioned he would have been upset if he had to stay on his contract right. or whatever. Fair yeah, enough. so they try to do right by the player and exactly. give them a move. And yeah. I think this is uh, that type of move, um, yeah, that really allows him to uh, get the playing time that hopefully he uh, really, you know, desires, mm -hmm. but also with a look into getting into the Paraguay. Uh, national team, and right. that's really vital for him because he made the switch from Argentina to Paraguay right. with that in mind, and then he missed com a couple of the cycles uh, due to injury or whichever, yeah. uh, you know, being overlooked for selection mm -hmm. because he wasn't really playing a whole lot, and so, yeah, he really is prioritizing that, and I think with good reason. I mean, he's, um, you know, going into his uh, football prime. Yeah, so. exactly, yeah, and I mean, yeah, you got... Copa America this year, you got World Cup in two years, you know, and so I think, yeah, he's uh, really trying to establish his national team career as well as his club career. Right, and so he goes to Club Libertad, uh, and, you know, I think best of luck to him. Absolutely. He uh, is a, you know, a player that I think will uh, thrive there, and, uh, you know, we're looking forward to seeing what he does there because mm -hmm. we know the talent is there for him mm -hmm. uh, to be able to do well. But, yep. you know, do you have a favorite 
you know, moment that Tito had for the Five Stripes. Yeah, I, you know, I always allude to that, uh, the semifinal versus Red Bulls. And like, I know like, that's not the night we won MLS Cup, but I feel like- Sure felt like it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right? It felt like when we played the Timbers, that was like a coronation to a degree. We really didn't know what was gonna happen versus the Red Bulls. Like, they had beaten yeah. us pretty uh, handed, <laughs> yeah, yeah Soundly. twice. Right, you know, and so it was like, oh, it was a tough opponent. And, but yeah, that whole night was magical and that, Tito's goal was the crescendo. And that's when we knew, like, yeah. you don't give up a three goal, three no lead. We knew exactly. we were going to MLS Cup at that point and probably gonna win it. Yeah, and but we still had one more leg to play. That's just what was so beautiful about right. it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, I think for me, um, it's gotta be that goal of the year against that team from Florida because when he hit it, I literally fell out of my chair. <laughs> I mean, I was flabbergasted when he did because right. I mean, it was just the the, I mean the precision and the the power on that was just insane, and so yeah, uh, it rightfully won, uh, I think. But you know, I think people would debate because we at that point were we were epic at uh, polls for MLS as well. So <laughs> possibly still still are I think. Still probably, you know, but I think we, we are uh, fighting like the, the likes of LAFC now and some other teams that have come in. But, sure, yeah. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see what Inter Miami, in terms of that, you know, yeah. in terms of their fans, what they right. can do. But Right. I'm still betting on this. But. Yeah, I know. You still got to back it because they haven't done it yet. Right, so. exactly. But, uh, but moving <clears throat> on from that, we had a preseason match against the Philadelphia Union. Right. And that was a 4-0 win. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the... You know, the differences in where we are in preseason versus where the Union are uh, is really kind of important here to uh, to look at in terms of it's not the scoreline, but, um, you know, I, I think we still looked good. We were clinical, and that's uh, very important as well. Yeah. But uh, I mean, they call them highlights for a reason, right? But, I mean, what we did see, what they did release was sharp, actually. Some of the combinations yep. were nice. Uh, we had Joseph laying off the ball to Petey. You don't see that too often, but uh, Petey, that was the first goal that Petey scored with his right foot, which is right. nice to see. Yeah, uh, and yeah, Petey scored two in this. Uh, yeah, and uh, you have Lennon linking up well with Joseph Martinez. Yeah. You have uh, Mulraney showing his kind of one-on-one -on -one skills and yeah. uh, putting some good balls in. And uh, so that's also good to see. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, you have Mesa being aggressive in the tackle. Right. Uh, maybe a little aggressive in the uh, in the penalty box. That might have been a called. bar. <laughs> Wasn't called, so yeah, whatever. Right, but, right. Um, and yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think just uh, an overall really just solid showing. Miles looks sharp. Again, you know, impervious as always. Right. So, uh, you know, it's something that you don't look too much into because yeah. it's a preseason match against two sides that aren't really in the same place in preseason. But, right. But whatever positives you want to take out of that, I think you can with that one especially. Yeah. Definitely. But uh, yeah, there were a lot of uh, academy and kind of uh, squad players that were uh, rotated in throughout the match. But um, yeah. So that makes kind of uh, at least that part an undefeated uh, preseason, and then technically we still are. Right. right, uh, right. Yeah. So with the third preseason match, it was against IF Ellsborg. Mm -hmm. It was uh, a Swedish side. Yep. One one draw. Um, I think they were definitely uh, a little bit more serious than the other two. Well, and not yeah, just getting fitness. They are. Um, they're in the U.S. in the middle of their winter break. Actually, they have about a month off, and so yeah, I mean they played Nashville actually a couple of days before they played us, and so they. They definitely were sharper definitely did take it a little more seriously because they got to go back into league action in a couple weeks i think it's a smart move from la united actually to schedule teams that are kind of in the middle of their season because they're you know it gives them a run for their money especially when you consider elsewhere is probably more fit at that point than at Lane United, and so yeah. it was a good competitive match, I think. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, lots of fouls on Barco lots where to an effect, I mean, you know, he's gonna, yeah, this is how he's probably gonna expect CCL to go for him. Yeah. Uh, whether he's gonna get as many calls as he did, maybe not, and that's where uh, we're gonna have to adjust probably accordingly. Yeah. But uh, that's yeah. something we've seen a lot of, though, I think, in these preseason matches is Barco on the ball. You know, he's like been that driving player, he's, you know, he's running at players, you know, he's carrying the ball through the middle. And yeah, it's, it's exciting to see Barco develop into this role. I, I, 
I don't know. I think I feel like a huge year is coming from him, man. Yeah, hopefully so. Um, and then PT <clears throat> with uh, the goal with his right foot. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's mm -hmm. showing some confidence, I feel like, yeah. uh, in this preseason. Whether it continues into the season, hopefully so. Hopefully. Uh, but I think, yeah, if he's confident in front of goal and he's you know taking these chances like this, uh, and placing them instead of blasting, that was nice right. to see as well. Exactly. I think that's the main uh, point here is, yeah, I think it's a different type of PT where he's not, um, you know, just kind of... Pressing? Yeah, pressing, but also just, you know, looking for a shot outside of the box always. He's really trying to get a good look mm -hmm. at goal, and I think that's super important. But, um, yeah, I mean... Definitely toughest match that we played, 1-1 one, one draw. I think uh, that really gets us ready for uh, CCL. And so, you know, uh, it's a good tune-up. But uh, we will have another tune-up against the Birmingham Legion on Saturday. Yep. Uh, They're USL side. And it'll be very interesting, I think, uh, what type of kind of fitness that they're in versus us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't think we should take them lightly, but you know, it could be where I mean, it's a USL side. We're yeah. expected to just you know kind of trounce them, uh, probably more handily than we did the Union. But yeah, uh, there's a familiar face, Anderson Asedu. Yes. Will, will suit up for Birmingham. He said he's looking forward to it. He had nothing but complimentary words to say about Atlanta and the staff. You know, it's just one of those things where it didn't work out. His career, you know, didn't continue with Atlanta, but obviously it's continuing. Right. And that's good. Yeah. I'm happy for him. I think there were whispers about uh, the age of Asiedu, and mm -hmm. so that's where uh, maybe he didn't really get, you know, the, the contract that he wanted because, yeah, when you there are questions about age. It's hard to give a contract. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we'll see. But, uh, you know, it'll be very interesting to see how he does against us. I mean, I think still a very talented kid. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And in terms of that, though, we'll put a blind lineup prediction because uh, why not? Yeah, I mean, sure. It's preseason. <laughs> let's, give it a, let's give it a roll. Let's yeah. tune up for the, the season it's as pre -season well. Preseason for us too. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But um, yeah, so I think it's goose between the sticks. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to be actually because we have a new player, uh, which we'll get into in a second. Ooh. But, uh, you know, I think to accommodate a guy that we just brought in, uh, I think it will be very interesting that if he, you know, just doesn't, um, you know, Kind of feature in any of the formations with right. the first team, I think not. Right. So I think yeah. he plays, and so I think it's a 4 3 3 formation. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, yeah, Goose, and then I think it's Escobar, right back, Miles, Mesa, and then because I think Castillo is injured, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe there's, he got a knock at least in, mm -hmm. um, in the game. And so right. I think Bello is the out and out mm -hmm. uh, left back that's available. Uh, and then I think it's Rosetto, Rometty, and Hyman as that midfield three. And then with PT, Barco, and Joseph up top. Um, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, pretty similar for me. I do have Castillo in there if he's good to go. Uh, just because of based on what we've seen. He, uh, he, looks, he looks okay. You know, he has a good delivery. And so, yeah, if it's between those two and like picking a first choice, I think Castillo is ahead of Bello right now. Mm, interesting. But, uh, yeah, so, you know. Let us know what you think the formation is going to be for the Birmingham Legion match. But uh, yeah, that'll be very interesting to see this weekend because yeah, it'll be the first match that fans can actually go to, mm -hmm. which yeah. we've been clamoring for. And uh, right. it'll be very exciting if you can get to Birmingham, Alabama. Right. But uh, let's get into the new transfer for Atlanta United. And it is Matias Roselto. Uh, or Rosetto, yeah. sorry. Um, yeah, it's. I think we're still trying to figure out how he says his name as well, but I think it's Mateus Rosetto. Mateus yeah. Rosetto. Okay. Anyway, all right. That but, feels right. That feels right. But Pretty anyway, uh, yeah, he joins from Atletico Paranaense, uh, and he has been described as a technically gifted midfielder by Boca Negra. Mm -hmm. uh, he fits the club profile. I mean, 70 matches at only. 
uh, 23 years old, with some international experience in right. the Copa Libertadores and Copa Sudamericana. Right, big competitions, right? Big yeah. competitions, and he's got uh, a little bit of a winning pedigree as well. So, you right. know, it's a, it's a good, um, I think, addition for our midfield going forward. Yeah, I mean, like, certainly seems so in terms of quality. Seems like he's, yeah, starting level quality like you were alluding to. Um, yeah, at that age, you know, somebody who is not yet at his prime, but will grow into it. You know, this is, yeah, an LA United move through and through. Uh, in terms of his positioning, I think it's actually very interesting because he's primarily a central midfielder, but secondary positions, he's like an attacking midfielder, maybe a little bit on the wing. So I think it's just- he's played at a defensive midfield as well as yeah. a sole defensive midfielder at times. I don't yeah. know if that's his best position. I'm not sold on that one too much, but uh, I mean that, you know, <laughs> I think if DeBoer did that, or I think if DeBoer lined up with like, uh, Rosotto and- uh, Rosetto. Rosetto, yeah. sorry, Rosetto yeah. and Hyman. <laughs> Like, if that's, like, the midfield, too, that'd be a pretty aggressive look. Yeah, very attacking, I yeah. feel like, and so... I mean, which I wouldn't rule out. There are a lot of teams who just bunker, right? And don't yeah. can't offer too much, in, like, more MLS play, talking about, of course. Right, but, but uh, I would fear for us on the counter a little bit, so I yeah. think there is a little bit of balance that we probably need if right. we were to bring him in. But uh, he was brought in on an undisclosed transfer fee, uh, using Tam, right. that all that Tam that we got, right? And uh, <laughs> but uh, he will also occupy an international slot. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think in terms of what he brings, uh, I have a transfer daily that uh, I go pretty in depth into what he uh, can offer. Mm -hmm. But uh, with about 89% uh, kind of passing accuracy in possession, yeah. uh, he's slightly even more accurate than a, a Nagby in that sense. And so right. it seems like he keeps things ticking very well. But he's not risk averse because he has 3.2 long balls completed per match. Yeah, and which is quite a, a decent amount, at least uh, more than what Nagby I think had. He was, I think, 0.7. That's what I was saying. Yeah, like That's I was trying to think of it. Like Nagby never really, his passes didn't have distance, you know, like he yeah. would carry the ball if anything and then yeah, lay it off. But. Right, and he would, yeah, get it to our attackers mm -hmm. for them to do uh, you know, so basically, he did the dirty work. I think uh, Mateus uh, Rosetto definitely. <laughs> yeah, we're still trying to work out. We'll nail it. I promise yeah, you. Yeah, by the end of this episode, we will nail that name. But uh, <laughs> he basically uh, looks to be a little bit, yeah, more aggressive. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little bit have a more eye for goal as well. You're right. And so uh, it's it's interesting. I mean, you know, he uh, in those leagues maybe, you know, a guy that didn't really see as much time as he wanted, but still saw a good bit of, amount of time with right. five goals. I mean, possibly, and, uh, you know, kind of had more goals than some of the guys that came in mm -hmm. that were, uh, you know, a little bit uh, in terms of promising, more promising than he was uh, on Miguel Miron, at Tito Pichalba, uh, in terms of goals, like he's got, you know, five in that time, it's it ain't bad, it ain't too shabby. And even in terms of uh, playing time, comparing to previous transfers, yeah, with like Tito, with LTP was another one, they actually were struggling for playing time, which is part of the reason why Atlanta United scouted them out. Seems that they've done the same thing here again, and if you look at why he wasn't playing, he was up against some really talented players. One of his teammates left yeah. for Europe for 20 million uh, dollars, and yep. then uh, the other one was Lucho Gonzalez, who was mm -hmm. European veteran, you know, so like, He's not going to have that same competition here, of course, you know what I mean? So I think, uh, yeah, I think it bodes well, honestly. I wouldn't worry too much about the playing time necessarily. Yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, rocket right foot. I mean, <sighs> yeah. I think if he can find the accuracy, <laughs> yeah. uh, it is, he, he will score some golazos. I think we sure. got to have some patience too, because I yeah. mean, yeah, you know, he's going to take his chances. There's some are going to go into the supporter section, but exactly. uh, you Maybe. know. Yeah, I think it, if you look at, say, like a Julian Gressel, right. not every single cross or shot from him was super accurate. Especially the shots. Yeah, and that's okay. But I mean, yeah. I think you have to take your chances, and you know, when you hit them, and when they go in the back of the net, you look like a genius. I mean, and like, so. <laughs> yeah, there's that. And like, one thing I would like to see more from the team this year are other goal threats. I think the last couple seasons, we've relied on Joseph, and fair enough, because like, he scores a goal a game at that rate, pretty much. But at the same time, if we could like, relieve the pressure from him, it could make him a more effective player, but it would definitely make us a more effective team. Definitely, yeah. I mean, they would definitely sit off of Joseph a little bit more or, 
uh, yeah, it would just be a little bit more balanced in terms of the goals. Right. But uh, in terms of where he could be deployed, uh, I think, yeah, right now it's maybe in that 4-3-3, um, mm -hmm. you know, as part of the more attacking uh, kind of, or more forward midfielder along with Heinlein. Right. Uh, or if it's in a 3-5-2, it might be where if uh, he's not part of the that 11, he might at least displace uh, you know, for if uh, Heinemann is not in, or if Barco or PT is not in, right. uh, I think he'd be first off uh, into the 11 in that regard. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, he also is wearing number nine, which <laughs> I think if you're a, a diehard purist of numbers, right. um, you know, number nine is a more striker number, Yeah. Um, you know, as well as, you know, if you look at the, the numbers across the pitch, seven, 11 or more of your Kind of wide midfielders or wingers, uh, you know, kind of two and three are your fullbacks or defenders, mm -hmm. and you know, four and five are traditionally a little bit more of your center backs, but could also be, you know, other numbers as well. Parky, right. of course, ward number three. Yeah. Uh, one that usually is your goalkeeper. So it's yeah. stuff like that where, yeah, I mean, number 10 is obviously your creative midfielder. Right, your, right, right. You know, the yeah. guy that drops into the hole. I do feel like, yeah, but, I, some of those numbers, I don't know if they still retain the same, like, meaning, but I do feel like the nine does. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those things where, like, a striker has settled into a number that's not nine, which is not unusual either. What? Joseph with seven, Gage Drogba wore 11 for most of his career, you know, so it, it's it's not unusual. Yeah, and, and it's, it's one of those things where, um, you know, we haven't been we haven't been blessed with a uh, number nine that's uh, really done, like, w they haven't lit MLS on fire. Right, exactly. So, uh, <laughs> and that's the, you know, where he can make the number his own. Yeah. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, he's wearing the number, I'm not wearing the number, so <laughs> really, I don't care. Right. So, <laughs> but I understand from the purists and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, <clears throat> I think it's an interesting conversation nonetheless. Yeah. But moving on from that, a transfer rumor came in over the weekend. Estudiantes de la Plata winger Manuel Castro uh, is reportedly close to coming on, uh, to Atlanta United on loan for six months. That's according to Cielo Sports. Uh, he's a 24-year-old Uruguayan. Um, and he is maybe just uh, deemed surplus the requirements yeah. from his coach or manager, Gabriel Malito, who uh, was very interestingly uh, linked to LA United before, uh, you know, <laughs> Frank Dubois was hired. Interesting. So, you know, yeah. uh, all, who knows? Uh, there could be some hmm. sort of link there where, yeah. you know, he... Be yeah, it's a, it's a maybe type of thing where they contacted him and said, hey, you know, if you have some guys that aren't playing, right? We take them. We'll take them off your hands, right? But um, but either way, uh, he's scored 17 goals, uh, or no, rather, uh, he for the Montevideo Wanderers, his previous club, he scored 17 goals and 13 assists for them, uh, with 11 goals in 2018. But uh, for Estudiantes, he's only scored three goals in 27 appearances, and right. so. Uh, maybe a little bit where you know he's not getting a lot of game time, right. underperforming maybe in those uh, kind of moments that he has been playing. Maybe a guy that could do well with the change of scenery. Yeah, I think so. And I, you know, looking at the roster now, it seems like he's depth, which is fantastic. You know what I mean? Like we haven't had too much depth, I think, at the four positions, or certainly not somebody who could come in and replicate or be almost as dangerous you know and, and to be fair it's hard to replace a pd or barco or joseph but yeah if he can be like valuable depth and get, spell those guys i mean that would i think go a long way towards our us doing well this season in multiple competitions right and especially yeah goals from the wings i think is super important yes. uh because yeah i mean we've been lacking a little bit of uh that as we alluded to earlier right so uh you know if that comes to fruition we'll see as we all know and we should know and realize is that transfer rumors, you know, any sort of transfer goes through a ton of different hoops and hurdles and everything to get across the line. Especially for an MLS team. Yeah, especially for an MLS team because <laughs> all these hoops of yeah. our uh, kind of salary restrictions and structures. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, if it happens or if it doesn't happen, I mean, you got to realize that uh, what it is, is that, you know, there are things that get in the way. Mm -hmm. uh, so, moving on from that into <clears throat> our Paraguayan pair, Santiago Arzamendia 
was reported last week to be reportedly imminent, uh, and it could be completed when they, uh, Paraguay, the U23s, they drop out of the tournament. and Which they have. They have. Uh, but uh, both he and Villasanti have returned to Cerro Porteño, and they have been chosen for the Copa Libertadores yeah. squad. So, very interesting now. Yeah, it Is seems it going like, to happen? Seems like a bit of posturing. I mean, hell, Tito was training with the team before he left. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, it's... Uh, eh, maybe. I don't... It's, you know, there's been so much smoke around this. I'd be s shocked, really, if we didn't complete this. Especially since it does seem like Cerro Porteño does want to cash in at this point and maybe invest in other areas. But, uh, yeah, I guess we'll just have to see. Yeah, we'll have to see. But uh, Arzamendia, I mean, yeah, definitely a guy in terms of uh, transfer fee. It would it'd be up there. So right. that would be very interesting how we kind of make that kind of all work within MLS structures. Mm -hmm. uh, CBA could play a part, but I think it's more that, yeah, it's just a matter of if we can just get him over the line. But uh, Matias Villasanti, also uh, the update is that he has two offers and it's from LA United and Inter Miami. Yeah. So our old friend Paul McDonough is uh, really kind of playing the rival now yeah. in a sense, uh, <laughs> apparently, anyway. So uh, it'll be very interesting. I would love it if LA right. United gazumped a rival. Or we can't call him a rival yet, but we could uh, be a way to start that rivalry, I guess. Yeah, if they pip us for a player or if mm. we pip them for a player. Yeah. yeah. I Let's mean, I would say <laughs> that would be the case, but uh, yeah, Biasanti, I don't think would command quite as high of a transfer fee as ours in India, but right. uh, you know, it's one of those, they have been long rumored now to almost more than a month and some change. So yeah. uh, a lot of a lot of fans are getting a little bit uh, kind of impatient. But again, sure. like I just said, yeah, there are a lot of things go, uh, that go on in a transfer that uh, kind of really make it difficult to get done easily. And also, it's not a normal transfer window for MLS, right? Yeah. It's not a normal winter because they are negotiating. Right. And then there's also that, that uh, aspect of um, you know, will they still kind of uh, fit within the you know roster restrictions of MLS for us? Uh, I think we will have uh, at least some international slots for them if they were, uh, you know, <clears throat> to be brought in or one of them rather. Yeah. But um, yeah, and in terms of uh, the window, they uh, their window ends soon as well, but they can still uh, you know loan out or sell players. So. Know, there still is a possibility past this week, yeah. but we'll see. So, uh, moving on from that, Atlanta United also announced a friendly in Mexico where they're going to be uh, kind of continuing their preseason in Guadalajara. Right. And so it will be against Leones Negros of Ascenso MX, mm -hmm. Mexico's second division. And right. it will be on February 11th. Yeah. Uh, Inter Very interesting. Interestingly yeah. enough, right? Yeah, uh, the Ascenso has their season has already started. You know, I think they're three matches in. So, but then this is another case of a team that is, uh, you know, in form, uh, kind of at have their legs. You know what I mean? And that's I expect that to be tough again. And it's going to be at uh, altitude as well. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's really what we were looking for in a preseason opponent. I think much better than we did last year, where we, I think, probably had uh, a little underwhelming of a, a preseason. Yeah. But this one, we're really trying to ramp up the opponents. We're really trying to kind of replicate the environment. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, intensity, maybe. Intensity, exactly. And so that's great that we've, uh, you know, found an opponent in Guadalajara. Yeah. And uh, try to, yeah, replicate some of those uh, conditions that we're going to be facing. <laughs> Really, really so. And uh, yeah, and this match will also be open to the public, and so maybe you know maybe some of the fans will come through, provide some uh, environment. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah, that, I think that'll help. Though it'd be good. Yeah, if you can afford it and go to Guadalajara, do it. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, they are probably going to sell tickets for it. But uh, or if you live in Mexico and you're watching this, hello to Mexico. Hola. But um, yeah, hola, hola. But uh, anyway, so let's move on from that. Uh, the secondary kit can be seen now with male and female models. Mm -hmm. Also, as well, the replica long sleeve. Uh, we didn't get to cover this last week, so that's what we're talking about this week. Uh, it's very interesting. I mean, I don't think the authentic ones are going to have long sleeves, but yeah. uh, the replicas having long sleeves, 
Yeah. I mean, you know. Into it. <laughs> Some, into it. Some people get cold in the bins. So, <laughs> you know, there's that too. And it's also it's white, and I'm assuming it's gonna be light material, kind of like this. You know what I mean? And so like I think you could pull off long sleeve even in the summer. Um, but yeah, I just I love that look, man. Yeah, Oof, so I, I, clean. Yeah, it's very clean. Uh, although I mean, there are some people that are hating on it as well. Yeah, you're you know you have uh, every right to that opinion as well. Sure. Uh, but and I, yeah, I mean, it's not. I didn't. We knew it wasn't gonna be anything flashy because we've yeah. seen the other uniforms as well. But I think I like it, you know, and I think it'll grow on us as you know, much like the uh, all the other ones do. Yeah, really. exactly. I mean, yeah. uh, most of them anyway. Yeah. In terms of most of the fans, they eventually come around to them, but. Uh, because I think when you see it on the players, you're like, okay, right. all right, all right. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think the the positive here, at least maybe with a replica for uh, the back, is that it's not as meshy as the King Peach. So right, at least right. on authentics anyway. Because <laughs> for replicas, didn't really have that problem. But you know, when uh, the players are on the pitch wearing the authentics, you can see their bare back pretty much. <laughs> Which, interesting. Anyway, whoa. <laughs> Are you trying to get there? No, no, no. Nope. Nope. Anyway, let's move on okay, from that. Yeah. Uh, the kit reveal, though, uh, will be happening tomorrow. We're filming this on a Tuesday. And so uh, it'll be February 5th. You know, there's a league-wide kit reveal for a lot of the teams, even though they've all been leaked. <laughs> but it'll be... A fun event nonetheless, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we'll try to get some content there for you. I think my time there is going to be on Thursday, so look out for something uh, over the weekend, possibly, right. uh, if all goes well. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so uh, speaking of kits, the uh, kind of rumored, not long rumored, but it was a, it's been a while, yeah. uh, for the rumored sleeve sponsorship with Piedmont Healthcare is confirmed, yep. and they will also become the kit sponsor for LA United 2, which, I mean, the LA United 2 kits, I mean, it was so clean without anything on there. Mm -hmm. I kind of really enjoyed that about it, but, sure. um, but you know, Piedmont Healthcare, I don't think it's the worst looking logo at all either. Right. Plus, I mean, you gotta, you gotta make money. Like, that's what it's about at the end of right. the day. You know, that's why you do the sponsors. I like the sleeve, uh, the, uh, the gold, how it matches with mm -hmm. uh, the the rest of the gold trim. And it, it, it works. You know, I still wanna see it in person, see how thin it is. I think that'll be like, kind of where I, I swing <laughs> in terms of how I feel about it, but uh, it's, okay. Sure. It is, it's okay. Yeah, and if it's on the uh, new Golden Era kit as well, right. I think it will match completely with yeah. that. Yeah. So. Uh, it ain't too bad there. So let us know what you think of the kits in the comments below. But uh, moving on from that, Anton Walks has returned to Atlanta United, uh, in, at least into the uh, training grounds now finally, because yeah, he had made his move and then we hadn't heard from him or seen him in about two weeks. Right. Uh, everybody was asking about him. Yeah, he's finally made his appearance uh, and he also gave some uh, kind of uh, a selfie video for the team as well today, right. but uh, he seems to be staying near the battery and around uh, Truist Park at least mm. in terms of before that. And so, uh, you know, we at least we're seeing him in town over the weekend, right. probably because yeah, he was hanging out and trying to maybe uh, kind of just kind of uh, bide the time because the team was not in town, but. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> it's kind of but, awkward, right? Yeah, he was just like, oh, where, where is everybody? Yeah, oh, cool. I guess I'll play FIFA. Yeah, I guess I'll play FIFA by myself, but uh, yeah, but he talked about it uh, in terms of the return to Atlanta United with AJC, and uh, he pretty much said he's always had this in the back of his mind that he would try to return, uh, and he said it's good to finally be back here. Yeah. Um, he also said in his selfie video for Atlanta United's uh, social media that this was his home in that sense. So it's I mean yeah we because we I think we realized that that settlement period is important to players. You know what I mean in terms of it, it does carry over I think uh, to on the field performance and so yeah that's one part of it that uh, we don't really have to do. Yeah, he he talked about maturing here uh, as a person as a man. Um, and I think, uh, you know, that experience that he had uh, with Tata Martino playing as many games as he did, 20 appearances, right. uh, 17 starts, uh, it really set forth, uh, you know, his kind of trajectory and his, his journey. Uh, and then now coming back, 
uh, to Atlanta United, he, saying that this was his team that he supports. Yeah. Oh, you'd like to hear that. Yes, exactly. But also that, you know, he's looking forward to <clears> working <throat> for, uh, you know, as prolific of a manager as uh, Frank de Boros. He was a fan of those Ajax teams. Right. So, very interesting indeed. And that's, um, uh, that's one of the benefits of going out and getting a big name manager is that players are like, oh, yeah, I want to play for that guy. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Indeed. And so, uh, in terms of the you know positions that he talked about that he would be willing to play and has played, yeah, he pretty much, you know, he'll he'll play any position that the uh, the coach tells him to, but right. he's played right back, left back, defensive midfielder, center back positions. Yeah. And I think very likely, yeah, he will play at all those positions for LA United because he's kind of that kind of Swiss army knife now. I, I think so, yeah. The one position I don't see him playing is like maybe central defender in the, the back three. But uh, yeah, I could see him being a right center back, a left center back, right back, left back. Uh, and yeah, even depth in midfield is so valuable. So I mean, like, it'll be interesting to see how much he actually plays, but just the fact that, yeah, you want your depth pieces to be versatile, because it almost, it almost like you can count, him, count on him for two positions, so you don't have to like literally double up on every position, because that's really difficult to do. Yeah, and some teams kind of uh, have specialists, and then some teams kind of have Swiss Army knives. Right. Uh, it's, I think, different for different coaches on what they type, you know, what type of player that they prefer. Um, you know, and if uh, in MLS you can get away with, uh, you know, maybe not having as kind of bloated of a squad, but also a guy that can do as many things as an Anton Walks can do, you know, it really could work out in terms of, uh, you know, four walks and, you know, the, maybe the playing time that he could crave here. Yeah. But uh, anyway, that's, I think, you know, just a, a really great move uh, for him to come back. And I think it warmed a lot of you know, fans' hearts as well. Yeah. But uh, moving on from that, a year ago on January 31st, Miggy made his move to the Premier League, his dream move. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, it started, started off not as, uh, as well as maybe he would have liked in terms of goals and assists. Sure. But I think he definitely won over a lot of fans' hearts, at least uh, Jordy fans, yeah. in terms of his work rate, in exactly. terms of um, just you know everything that he brings on the pitch besides yeah. the final end product. The things that we loved about him, yeah, or still right. love about him. Right. Yeah. But he finally has been uh, you know scoring the the goals, and now I think you, you see a lot of Newcastle fans mm. really buying in now that oh they get it now it's. Yeah, some players, they just take a little bit more of a betting in period. Yeah, and it's to the point where, I mean, if he continues this form and even pr improves, I don't know if he'd stay at Newcastle. I, I think they might want to cash in. Yeah, but, um, you know, I think he's, he's if he's looked at more of as a four, then he will have to have more in product. Yeah. But uh, if they, he's maybe played more in uh, the midfield per se, then, you know, that could be a different type of, uh, you know, proposition for him, I think. But. Yeah. Uh, moving on from that, uh, a mural of Jose Martinez in Atlanta yes. has been uh, painted up. It's still a work in progress, but yeah. Jose Martinez, he visited it, it uh, today, showed a video of it, and he said, why I love this city, reason. And I think, you know, he feels the love. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> it's the the build the statue yeah, movement yeah, that, that yeah. needs to happen. I think, uh, yeah, if, obviously not right now, but <laughs> I think eventually and yeah. pretty soon there is a, a point in time if he can continue at his prolific pace. Absolutely. I mean, he's quite. If and when there. he breaks the MLS record, go ahead and break ground. Let's uh, let's get that going. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Why not? But uh, but yeah, I think he uh, you know he sees the love. He was really interacting with fans really late last night even uh saying some uh, you know grammatically maybe not correct things sure. but uh hilarious nonetheless it's always <laughs> joseph martinez typical joseph right yeah exactly yeah he's uh you know just always i think you know it's endearing on social media right. but uh so in terms of uh you know at least for miggy another you know former five stripe our former captain, Michael Parker, he chatted with another uh, former Fry Stripe in Bobby Boswell mm -hmm. about his uh, career, the characters that he shared a locker room with, and his goal scoring record uh, in an MLSPA podcast called Play by Players. Bobby Boswell is the host of that. 
And as you can probably expect from a Bobby, Bobby Boswell, it's hilarious. Yeah, of course, right. And uh, yeah. And it, Michael Parker is another one with those. With those, he is his sense of humor is hilarious. Yeah, it's super dry. Yeah. But the anecdotes that he has, he was on that BSI podcast, and you know, just when, uh, yeah, you want to see these uh, these players kind of open up like this, especially when they retire. Yeah. And to kind of talk about the game, it's fascinating. So you should uh, check it out. We'll have it in the description box below because it is, yeah, an awesome listen. But um, yeah, moving on from that, the CBA has been extended, extended. at least that was from last week. Yeah. Uh, it was extended, extended to February 7th. Right. Uh, Which is three days from this recording. Three days from this recording. And uh, yeah, I mean, is it any closer to getting done? I surely hope so. Yeah. Because... I mean, they said that when they extended it, that they were on good terms, just need right. to iron out some details. Details. Of course, it has not been announced yet. We expect in the next couple of days, maybe? Yeah, and so if it does, we will all rejoice and right. we will make a transfer uh, daily video and talk about it. Right. But uh, as of right now, there's no more update on that. And so we shall see. Hopefully there is no work stoppage. But either way, anyway, that does it for the news and gets us to our buy or sell segment. And simply, we put up an Atlanta United topic and we say if we buy or sell it. So first topic is that on February 2nd, three years ago, Joseph Martinez joined Atlanta United. Is he the greatest sports, or is he the greatest Atlanta sports athlete of all time, buy or sell? Oh, I have to think hard about this one. Um, I really want to put him up there, especially since he's already delivered a championship. But um, I think, and I don't like talking about uh, y'all's baseball team, but... <laughs> uh, He's a Nationals fan. I'm sorry, World Series champion, Washington Nationals. Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, uh, yeah, I would allude to, I think, Chipper, because he was a number one overall pick. He spent his whole career as a Brave. He won a championship in 95, and he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. I think, I think he is... Probably the most Mr. Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, I also allude to Hank Aaron. He played in the city for eight years. He broke the record here. And for a city that's historically always had a significant black population, I think, like, yeah, Hank Aaron's got to be there for me. And Joseph is interesting, though, because I feel like he's having a cultural impact, which is important in Atlanta. You think of athletes like Deion Sanders, uh, Michael Vick, even though his career itself wasn't all that prolific, people still remember that era. Mm -hmm. and I feel like Joseph... And this team is carving out like a new era for this city. So mm -hmm. I think, yeah, he, if, he, if he breaks the MLS record, straight to the top for me. But okay. right now, not yet. Yeah. Um, man, I, ooh, it's really hard for me to sell that. And yeah, you gave some really great points. Uh, yeah, I'll throw in a Dominique Wilkins as well right. in terms of prolific uh, Atlanta sports athlete. Uh, yeah, I mean, but the issue is with maybe Wilkins is the lack of maybe good teams that he was on. Right. And so no championship, but, uh, and no real like crazy records that he broke. But mm -hmm. I mean, he was the human highlight film for a reason. I mean, he wowed uh, audiences for a long time. Yeah. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, Chipper Jones is probably, you know, the guy at the moment because right. of, you know, what you've, mentioned but i think in terms of so far in terms of the best start so far joseph martinez <laughs> definitely is uh is making a case mm -hmm. but yeah right now i also sell so, so mm -hmm. anyway uh that gets us to our ne next one and it is we are set with our squad number as we have enough utility with the players that we have brought on board buy or sell so <sighs> Buy with the major caveat. <laughs> um, so you say we're set up with our squad number. I think in terms of numbers, we're probably fine. Um, but I'm looking at that left back position and it's between Castillo or Bello. And I'd honestly prefer if we just brought in, you know, we, we know the woman that we want. But uh, yeah, if we complete that deal to bring in another left back, then I think then I would be like, okay, this is a roster that's ready to compete on multiple fronts. Right now, it's it's fine. It's, we, we could pass with this, I think, until the summer at least. Yeah. I I sell that this uh, the squad number is where we should be right now because, yeah, I think we're one injury away from uh, some of that depth that we are going to start to get a little worried if, mm -hmm. uh, uh, if one of them does. And so that really kind of, 
I think, yeah, we need to kind of uh, bring in some guys uh, kind of depth-wise to kind of round it out. Um, you know, just especially for those kind of U.S. Open matches and uh, mm -hmm. other competitions that we're in so that we can spell certain guys. Because I think if we look at it in terms of why we won U.S. Open Cup, I mean, we had some really, really good depth that yeah. we, we pretty much had... Uh, I mean, maybe not a starting caliber for MLS, but we had, at least against some USL sides, uh, a good starting 11 against those. And so yeah. that's very important because... Yeah, think of like a Brandon Vasquez, for example, the impact he had in that competition. Yeah, because I think the first year, although we were, uh, you know, maybe not prioritizing it as much as we could have, uh, right. I think we used a lot more kind of uh, homegrown players or academy guys that... Yeah. Um, or guys that were really more fringe that's just uh, it's a reason why we didn't progress as far as we did there was yeah there was definitely a deliberate approach from Tata too because he didn't he just didn't care about it so I mean his, yeah. his the squad that he used and it showed so it absolutely showed I mean yeah there were there were times where yeah it was like uh, um, I think uh, Zach Lloyd played at uh, right back, right. and Anton Walks played in the center, and Miles Robinson uh, versus I think uh, Charleston Battery. Right. He, he at halftime switched that completely because he knew like okay that's just not working. <laughs> um, and so yeah, it, it's one of those where we just were a little thin in earlier seasons. I think we're in that kind of territory where it's like it's a little thin, especially if some injuries happen, mm -hmm. which they inevitably happen during a, the course of a season so yeah i think i sell we need to make some more moves so yeah. anyway that does it for buy or sell gets us to the mailbag you guys send in these questions through ig story please continue to do so and we might answer your question in the future first question comes from l marini 22 do you think we will get far on concagaf or in concagaf or in the CCL, right? Right, right. Um, so, of the players that we're linked with, right, if we sign, I would say a couple more, let's say if we sign Arzamendi and then, uh, I guess, one of the other two, mm -hmm. I'd actually feel pretty good about our squad, yeah. Because, uh, you know, I think that we should be getting past Montagua, and that's not to look past them, but just comparing the quality of squads, we should be getting past them. And then, if it is that it's Cuba America on the horizon, uh, you know, they're that's a tough one, yeah. They're kind of, but you know, it's interesting because they're kind of going through it. You know, like for example, Rojo Martinez. You know, it's unclear whether he's going to be part of the squad or not. They have lost players over the past calendar year. I don't know if they're as good as Monterey was last year, and Monterey went on to win the whole thing. I don't know if Club America is good enough to win the whole thing. So I think that that might actually be a very interesting matchup. Like, yeah, you'd still favor Club America, but. I think especially with a year of experience, a longer uh, preseason, I, I don't know. I like I like our chances in that one. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. Um, yeah, it definitely is. I think to a degree, um, you know, if we <clears throat> kind of play Montagua uh, to a pretty convincing kind of manner, then I think you know I definitely like our chances a lot more. I think currently with the uh, like I've said, and like I've alluded to, the squad number that we have, because um, very quickly we start to get into, uh, you know, two match week or two match day weeks where it starts to get a little bit uh, where we need to make sure that um, you know we're not stretching ourselves too thin. Right. Um, I think if we get the depth, I think we can really, you know, kind of have a shout uh, against Club America, and mm -hmm. if we get past them. You know, it'll then, be very then you're in the semis, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, I mean, depending on how far you think uh, far is, right? I think uh, you know that's one it, step further. Yeah, I mean, one one step further. If we can get past them, and then you know that'll be yeah, not too bad. So, right, right. Uh, but of course, I'd want to win this thing too, though. So, I mean, right. I, I back us to win it, but at the moment. Yeah, we kind of lack maybe probably the, the chemistry and the um, having played together long enough because so many of the squad has been kind of, uh, you know, retooled and rebuilt, rebuilt anyway. So the next question comes from illogical underscore 11. Arzamendia or Viasanti? Who would you or who would be more important to the team? 
So I kind of alluded to this on social media and I'll repeat myself here. I think that uh, based on what we've seen, the wing back slash full back play is going to be important. Even if we line up in the 4-3-3, I think, yeah, we could see a lot of Escobar, I think, going up field, combining with the wingers. And so uh, for me, it's Arsene Mendia because he is the more talented one of the two. I think there's a potential uh, to make money on a, you know, selling on to Europe. Um, and yeah, I mean, like we haven't had that kind of impact from the left wing back position since the 2018 postseason when Greg Garza came back healthy and, you know, he had a big impact, you know, and so I think I, I like to refer to that, uh, of, you know, for the 2018 postseason for obvious reasons, but I think that stretch was probably the best that we played in terms of like the quality of opponent and how we played. And so, yeah, yeah he also combined well with Mickey on the left side right. as well. Yeah, right. I agree, I agree. Yeah, so I think yeah, I think there's a lot of it would it would open up the potential for what we could do as a team. I think if we bring in Arzamendia. Yeah, uh, I definitely agree. It's Arzamendia uh, because yeah, he could play pretty much at any of those left side positions, and that's really really I think beneficial because I mean yeah, as well as Justin Miriam played uh, for the stretch during last season, he wasn't maybe as, um, you know, consistent at the end of the season. Right. Uh, kind of trailed off a little bit. And, and then so, teams went after him as well. He was a liability on defense to a degree, which he's right. he's always been a winger, so you expect that. Yeah, I mean, the fact that at 30, he uh, converted himself to a wing back is impressive in itself. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think, you know, for the left side, I think we've been clamoring for that. Uh, left back position has been, I, I, said this multiple times it's like spinal tap the drummer <laughs> yeah just you just can't keep it healthy or slash in spinal tap uh, it's so grim but they keep losing the drummer they keep uh every one of them dies so <laughs> so so this is i mean not exactly the same situation but um in terms i would of hope like, not yeah but in terms of the left back position we haven't been able to keep him healthy and so uh yeah if we can bring in more depth and more talents i think yeah we have to do it um uh, although yeah you know you try to work up and down the spine first but i yeah. think um it is where i'm not sure that biasanti can now offer anything uh, that's the players that we already have in the, that they don't and so right um, you know it would just be some more depth and I think maybe at his price maybe not the uh, the absolute first move though I think yeah the biggest benefit of signing via Santi is that he's been linked to other MLS teams so like okay if we keep him from another MLS team great but uh, but yeah I think yeah agree with what you said yeah, yeah I think the interest maybe <clears throat> was there but maybe if it is actually going to transpire in anything we shall see but right uh next question comes from james rogers 26 should we actually be concerned by the amount of departures sure yeah i mean look i mean we have lost uh a pretty a lot of players so i saw the stat today uh about uh, mls teams and players returning in terms of minutes and atlanta united have about 54% of their minutes returning from last season, which is second lowest in the league. Right. And so right next to Chicago Fire. Right. Who are still working on their roster. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're in a little better spot than them, I would think. Yeah. But uh, but I mean the fact is we haven't completely replaced them. And so, yes, okay, you know, I think the moves are understandable and I think they were smart. And now we know that the team is sitting on a bunch of TAM. And so we just want to see how that TAM is being used. And so, yeah, I think until those players come in and are signed and are through the door, then I think, yeah, you have every right to be concerned. Yeah. I think, yeah, you, you have uh, a right to be concerned. I don't think, um, you know, we should be up in arms or, right. um, you know, at any point right now kind of uh, yelling at the front office like, you know, you're selling off all our favorite players. Mm -hmm. um, because, yeah, I think there is to that effect where the players that they brought in uh, were the guys that became our favorite players. And so, you know, I exactly. think there is that possibility <clears throat> of them also, the new guys, being uh, our new favorite players. Exactly. And so uh, it's okay. Uh, this always happens with clubs. But it is, yeah, right now, um, you know, we're not in that final uh, part of the transfer window where the roster's set and... Uh, you know, you have the big picture of exactly how the, the team looks. And so, yeah, I mean, you're through the process right now. I think we're grieving. We're also welcoming new players. Mm -hmm. It's uh, completely part and parcel to being a fan of a 
you know football club, and so this is this is what happens. Absolutely. But um, you know, no one, uh, you know, you, you don't. Uh, it, it's one of those things where, uh, yeah, like if there are people that are lambasting you for feeling, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah it's they can go do one. Cause <laughs> <they're> just, <laughs> right. Oh no, yeah, and then you know, everybody I, has their right to feel how I, they feel. About I think the team. you should appreciate a player's contribution, you know, especially yeah. when they helped you win. Like I understand, yes, you know, these moves need to happen, but then like this excitement about moving players on. I don't necessarily get that or agree with it. You know what I'm right. saying? It's like, it's, okay, like Miggy moving to Europe, that's cool because he's going to Europe. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, yeah, I mean, yeah, you keep the players that you can and the players that you can't, you know, you wish them luck and hopefully you trust the front office to bring in uh, just as good talent. Right. And if they don't, we have every right to be critical. Exactly. That's just part of uh, the fandom. So yep. uh, next question goes from Thomas Jeffels 17 Will Hindman, I believe, uh, you wrote hand and, uh, play in Nagby's position or will Rossetto come in straight into the lineup? I don't think anybody's playing Nagby's position. He's just too difficult to replace, you know? And like, so I don't think anybody's gonna do exactly what he does. But, uh, you know, I think with the amount of money that Hindman is getting paid, and I'm assuming that Rosetto came in on a significant investment between Tam and his salary. Mm -hmm. uh, I expect both of them to play. And so that's why I do agree with you in that, yeah, we could see a 4-3-3 with both of them sort of kind of next to each other, doing different things, of course, mm -hmm. and then like Rometty beneath them, sitting as your defensive midfielder. Yeah. And so I think, yeah, I think that that's, if you're looking for a lineup to where all of those players fit in, I think that's probably the best way you do it. Um, other than that, I think what you alluded to before, you know, of course, Hyman can't play every game, so maybe you line up in 3-5-2 with Rosetto instead of Hyman. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think there's multiple possibilities there. Yeah, I think, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe he's not an out-and-out -out starter, but I think he will start a lot of games. I think uh, between Hyman and Rosetto, there's gonna be a lot of creativity in midfield. Um, and Especially if uh, Barco is part of that uh, that midfield three at right. some point as well, right. yeah, there could be uh, a very aggressive look. And so, yeah, it uh, it very well, you know, uh, could uh, be a, a point in which you know Rosetto is um, you know seen a lot. And so, hopefully, he is you know we'll see. But uh, next and last question comes from Negrito X Negrito. Do you think Joseph plays better in a one striker system or a two striker system? We haven't seen too much of a two striker system, but I could. Yeah, technically, anyway, because yeah. yeah, 352 uh, technically sees PT or Barco next to him. Yeah. And, and I... past Miggy as well, or Tito. Sure, yeah, but... yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If, uh, yeah, that's true. Actually, that's a good point. But it's not really an out and out where it's like, okay, you have your traditional uh, target, right. you know, target forward right. uh, who's knocking down the balls and then uh, kind of a smaller guy to. Uh, run onto them or mm. run in behind and uh, score the goals. Yeah, I think yeah, it's it's where yeah, Jose Martinez has uh, you know a decent uh, hold up game. I think mm. um, pretty damn good, but uh, I wouldn't say it's like top in the league or anything like that. Right. But um, you know he's got so many facets to his game as yeah. well. He can dribble, uh, he can run in behind, he can. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I mean I think he showed more to his game in 2019 in terms definitely. of dropping deep and uh, you know being able to pass and create a little bit. And so, but yeah, you know, one thing I would say in terms of Joseph, like we haven't seen him with a true target man. Like even Brandon Vasquez preferred the wings at times and so on. So it would be interesting to see Joseph in that like big man, little man. <laughs> yeah, it would be interesting. Combo. I think yeah, he's done hella good in a kind of lone striker system right, right. Uh, as what you're saying so I think yeah he's, he's probably better in this lone yeah striker I think system. nowadays um, I think most of the the top teams generally anyway yeah aren't trying to play with two strikers up top it kind of unbalances the team but right. uh, there are some teams that do it really well mm -hmm. but I think the most elite teams I think usually are playing with one striker I think you could see it at like Man City where uh, Sergio Aguero is maybe not 
Um, you know, favored at times. Right. You know, Gabriel Jesus uh, is maybe the first choice um, right. sometimes. And uh, Sergio Aguero, though, I mean, you know, scores so many goals, and you know, that's where he can come on later. Mm -hmm. So there is that type of aspect as well, where uh, you know, if you do have two elite strikers, uh, you could bring them on later. And so you know, with uh, for Joseph back back to LA United. Uh, for Jose Martinez, in terms of Adam John, mm -hmm. uh, maybe not elite, but uh, I think he's a different look, different guy that uh, definitely could probably be that kind yep. of target forward for Joseph if we need a different look later in the game. So yep. that does it for the mailbag and pretty much the entire show, except for the question of the day. Here we go. So we've got three players left that have been hotly linked to Atlanta United. We've got... Uh, Matias Villasanti, Santiago Arzamendia, and Manuel Castro. Who would you like to see the club sign first between these those three players? Let us know in the comments. But guys, that's it for us today at Rumor 2. Subscribe if you haven't already. Smash the like button and share this video because it really does help us a lot. For Mark, I'm AJ. Thank you guys so much for watching. Yeah.